Hey Warriors, so this is the Orkish AI Next.js framework, you may be seen it from the channel, and recently I upgraded it to Next.js 15, and I'm using here TRPC, as you can see it here, and Tenstack or React query, and plan is now to get rid of all of those dependencies and use solely server actions, Next.js caching, and also React 19 new hooks. So if we go here to the server directory inside the routers, we see that we have here different routers. So this one is used for AI calls. So here we have our completion and that one is bringing us back this. So if we here ask, give me 10 orkish names, then we are using the TRPC mutation to return the result and display it inside of our UI. So we can see it here. We are sending the prompt, we are sending the model. And here we have that part where we are using Zod. So we have to recreate this whole thing inside our React hook forms. And then we are just sending that input and that model to the Orkish OpenAI service. This is the package that I created for easily using OpenAI API and we are just returning the result. So this one should be easy. We just need to copy this entire thing from our mutation and I'm going to create a new file inside the server directory. So we are going to keep this directory server, but we are going to delete everything else from TRPC like client index and all these routers and I'm going to call it ai.ts so here we are going to recreate all endpoints from here and it's only three so get voice that's text to voice image and completion so here i'm going to create export new let's call it function get completion like this and there we are going to paste the entire thing from our AI router. And here, so we can delete this input. This is the TRPC thing. And we can even like uncomment this stuff. This is for the token system. So let's keep that one. And then we can import all things that we need from here. And also the Orkish OpenAI service. So we need to copy this part also here so we need to use that one in order to use the OpenAI API then here we need prompt that one is good and completion model I think that's a good yes that's a good naming here so I have all these types inside the shared types we can see it here so we have the completion models that are available. This one is maybe even deprecated. I have to check it on the OpenAI API and we have for the image models, resolutions, etc. So now we can import the remaining stuff. So here all these inputs should be deleted like this. So we are using the prompt and the model from our function. And here we need to import token spends from our schema and db from drizzle and it looks like we don't have any errors awesome so now let's delete also this to do and let's go to our completion here this component so here we are using the mutation here it is get completion we are calling it uh, here as use mutation and then inside the handle chat gpt we are calling it here so basically we just need to call our server action here and it should work so let's delete this one and let's delete trpc and here we are going to import get completion from from here from our server slash ai and we are going to delete this mutate async and delete these brackets and we are going to use so our prompt and our selected completion model and i think this one should already work let's try it out so here server only yes we have to put use server inside of our ai file and now let's refresh our screen and here it is 
So let's try it out. Give me 10 orcish names and we're getting our completion. And is it working or not? Yes, awesome. So we already replaced one mutation and it is working with server actions. So the thing we are missing now is our type safety with Zod and we are going to use here the form from ShadCN and React Hook Forms to keep the data safe. So we are going here, I'm going to search for the ShadCN docs and going to search it on Google and we are going here to our components and to our form. And we are just going to take the first example so we are going to use zod here inside of our open ai completion and then we are going to use zod resolver and use form like this and also we are going to put this one the on submit and our form inside the component so we are putting it in the beginning here and finally, we need to import all of these. So we already have the input and we have the button. We just need our form component. And I think we already have it. Let's see. So like this from components UI. Yes, we have it. And now finally, we just need to put our form like this. So we are going to wrap up everything inside of our form here and we need to close it after our submit button both this form and the capital one awesome it's somewhere yeah it's probably needs to be outside of the div let's wrap everything up like this and yeah this was the problem this closing form so we'll see about the UI and everything, how it looks. So now we need, this is the text area and not input, but we can use it nevertheless. So here I'm going to copy the form field and I'm going to put it here and inside here, instead of our input, I'm going to put our text area. So now here inside of our schema, here it is. We need our prompt, which is going to be, let's say, just a minimum of two. And also we need our model, which is going to be this enum completion model. So you saw it here from the shared types. And by default, we are just going to put prompt to be an empty string. And completion model is going to be 3.5 turbo. Now our text area we can put there for our name to be prompt and here we're also going to put not prompty but prompt and we can remove the description so we can keep the same UI and remove it from here also and let's see how does it look now. Okay it's not perfect because we added this form which has some it's probably giving it a hard time so let's put all these classes inside this form and we are going to delete this div so now it should be better it's not yet so this form field is somehow making it uh, narrowed i think we can just put here class name with full and that it's probably yes so that one is working awesome so now we have our prompt type checked and here we need to do the same thing for our drop down menu item so how is it looking now i don't remember okay it's a drop down but we could use a select box here i think there is no reason to use a drop down so i'm going to search here for select and we are going to go to the example for select how to use it with forms and here it is so we are using the form field with select and i think if we just copy paste this that cursor is going to do everything for us so here i'm going to tap couple of enters and copy paste it so now here this one is a model and here we can also type model we need to import our select box 
it looks like we don't have it so let's install that one quickly i'm going to add the select so i'm adding the select component and that one is going to be inside of our ui so i'm going to the ui and here it should be somewhere inside is it installed oh, okay we have to install the following packages something is changed with shed cn there it is okay so now it is installed we are going to create a new directory select and we are going to move it there and inside of the index we are just going to export it like this awesome so now we can use it here and let's maybe pick it up yeah like this it's easier than to import one by one so i'm going to copy paste it and put it to be imported from our components ui and now we have it here we are going to delete the description and here for our content let's see cursor ai what you got and here it is awesome so we are putting our models inside and here we are just going to say select a model model and everything looks i think pretty much good i'm going to delete the drop down and let's test it out so select box is looking fine we're just going to leave the gpt 3.5 turbo and now if we get completion we are oh actually it's working yes because we are not submitting the data we still are using yes we are calling on handle chat gpt here we are going to put type submit and we need to put handle chat gpt basically inside of our on submit here like this and also there we need to catch our values so here we are going to have values for our prompt and values for our model so we are going to send it completely like this basically so we don't need this handle chat gpt method anymore and this one is going to be a sync like this and we are going to await the get completion and here we are just going to put values prompt and values model and then when we have our completion we are just going to set our ai result to that completion and this one should work let's see just if we have everything here i think yes so here we don't need to do this i mean we can do on submit when we press uh, on key down i'm not sure what is this used for but let's delete it then we need to pass our field so it's like this and we are going to remove the value prompt and this set prompt is now not used so we are not using that one we have everything inside of our form values and also for selected model we are keeping that one in the values and for loading we are later going to use react 19. so here this one can be removed and let's try it out so going here now let's refresh and we are going to use gpt 3.5 turbo and let's say give me or first let's get completion like this okay so it's not working we have our validation working and now give me 10 orkish names and getting completion we don't see loading that's fine and yeah so it's working we have our type safety server actions are working and only thing left is our loading that we are going to use use form status hook and yeah we can just put it here so here this loading let's change that one and we can put basically this loading in every component that is using forms and uh, yeah let's use this image i mean this one is good we are just going to put here so we are going to put our pending and that one is going to be yes from the use form status i don't know how cursor already knows about the new use form status from react 19 that's really impressive and here we are going to display it only if it's pending and we need to put the fragments so this one is good and 
I think this one should work, so let's try it out. Here we are just putting it, it needs to be inside the form. So that's the thing with use form status. And let's try it out. So now the use form status, yes, that one should be the client component now. So here we are putting the use client and let's try it out. So now if I put give me 10 orkish names and get completion, we are not getting the pending state. Okay, let's see what's going on. So let's open the use form status documentation and to see how is it used. So here we need this action. Okay, we are using on submit. So that could be a problem because you're using React hook forms and everything is pretty much asynchronous. I think it's even not possible to use use form status. So I'm not going to bother you now with this. We are just going to put the is loading. So let's create like this loading set loading state. And I'm just going to put set loading to true and here set loading to false. And in case it's loading, we are going to display this loading component. And here let's delete the use form status and use client and this pending and these fragments. And now it should work. Let's try it out. So here, give me 10 orkish names and get completion. We have our loading, it's working. So I hope I'm going to make it like, I'll try to research how to do this, but it's better to get the job done on any way. I hope that we are going to avoid this is loading state, but you sometimes gotta do what you gotta do to get the job done. So let's now remove all the stuff that is not used like this comment and this enter and all these drop downs and things like that. And everything is now pretty much working without TRPC. So we have our completion method. We still need our images, our text to speech. We need, let's see what we have here. So there is also Stripe for buying tokens, then there is like whole token logic. I'm not going to bother you now with all this because everything is pretty much the same. We are just going to write completely new server actions for each endpoint that we have here. And we are going to call it asynchronously inside of our UI or wherever it's used. So I'm going to do the rest of the refactoring on my own. And if you want to see it, I'm going to leave the GitHub repository in the description below. And also this repo has already, I think, 100 stars, if I'm right. Let's see. And it would be great. It's this one, Orkish AI and XJS framework. If you could add one more. Oh, there is actually 101, even I started my own project. So you can find this project on this branch and you can try it out, of course. You can use it. It's like some kind of micro SAS maker for AI projects. So try it out.